All right, guys, to get ready for the demo that's dropping later this week, I am putting together an overrun strategy guide. This is based off watching just about every video I could find on the internet about it, and then playing it myself at the community playtest. So not to bore you guys with the really basic stuff that I'm sure you are all already know about overrun, I'll jump right into the strategies for the COG, and we'll get to Locust in the next bit. All right, so one thing which people have an idea of is that the COG are sort of programmed to lose and the Locusts will always be victorious. That's not the case at all. Especially if the teams are not very organized, the COG actually have an advantage. Because their objective is more simple, they just have to put their backs to the goal and defend. And the Locusts, if they're not organized, have a tendency to trickle in one at a time and be easy prey. The COG actually won the first three matches that were played at the, at the playtest before people started to figure out that communication was really key to get anything done as the Locusts. So of course the objective for the COG is to defend the eel hole covers and the, and the generator. But I think the best way to approach it is to deny the locusts the points they need to create those powerful units. Because when you have several powerful units all working in tandem together, they can be really unstoppable and they steamroll right through everything. So if you deny the locusts the points they need to make those units, and then at the end of the game, when the maps become much more easy to defend because of the, the increased choke points, you put yourself in a great position to choke the local steam out entirely. A couple quick basics here. At each stage in the initial rounds when you're protecting the e-hole covers, the locusts are going to have two routes that they can use to approach the objective. So while you're watching the pre-game counter countdown, it's a great time to cover who's going to cover which side and with what units. Because it's really key the moment you break out of spawn to charge right to your spots to prevent the locusts from getting a couple easy fences without any resistance at all. So the locusts have a tendency to use a ticker rush right at the beginning of the game because they're the best against barriers. Um, and by far the best counter to tickers is the engineer's turret. So that's why it's important to have one engineer at each flank. And then I would recommend having a medic supporting him and maybe two medics right off the bat and then a soldier. I'd probably use the soldier as a floater unit to stay centrally located and then to flow to wherever the, the attack is the fiercest right off the bat. And the cog really need to communicate where the locusts are and in what numbers, so you can adjust the defenders to match up against the locust attackers. And it, it, you're really wasting resources if you're playing three on one in one spot and then allowing two guys to get hit by four locusts on the other flank. That, that's how you lose fences quick and let the locusts in to the, into the e-hole cover area. Okay, so as an engineer, obviously you need to stay close to the barriers because you repair them. And remember that a well-timed turret can wipe out an entire ticker horde, and those turrets are completely beast. They put out a ton of fire, are really effective, and they, they do recharge quickly, so don't be afraid to use them. And of course, remember that you have a Nasher shotgun, and that the engineer is really what, one of the best flankers there is on the COG team. Capable of coming behind the locusts and just tearing them up. They have a tendency, at least I found, to get sort of bunched up on barriers and all be looking in. And if you can get outside the barrier and come up behind them, you can really mess up the locust team with a well timed flank. And especially if you have your medic throw a, a stim grenade right at you as, as you're about to make contact on your flank route. So communication with your medic is essential because you obviously need a stim grenade whenever you are repairing a barrier or whenever you're about to push the locust. And a, one thing you need to be aware of as the engineer is that you are very vulnerable while you're repairing barriers to enemy grenades because the, the grenadier knows right where to throw it and it's a one-hit kill even if you're standing in a stim cloud. So the Medic is actually a really effective unit because it has both the Lancer rifle and the, the sawed-off shotgun. But the sawed-off only starts with two bullets in it. It's a two in the chamber and then you're done. So you really need to ask for ammunition early and often to get that gun stocked up. Because the Medic plays so much better when she can dart in, get a couple jibs, and roll out and provide cover fire again. And when you're playing as a Medic, you really need to pay attention to your teammates and listen to their callouts whenever they need help. Because it's much better to throw a stim grenade to keep them alive than to let them go down and give the locusts 175 points for the kill and then revive them. And of course you want to have that communication to where your, your engineers are repairing with healing cover and that people call out pushes and so you make those pushes with stim grenade cover. A rush of engineers and, and medics with their sawed offs out with healing cover can be really devastating on unsuspecting locust crew. Now surprisingly, the soldier is not really the up-in-your-face frontline unit that you think he is. He is probably the most important support player on the team. 
Both his weapons, the Lancer and the Bushka, are best used at medium range. So he's, he should sit back, always be shooting towards the most intense fighting, and always be flowing towards the most intense fighting, putting that Lancer fire in, putting that Bushka fire in. And as soon as he spawns, he needs to throw an ammo crate down. The COG team uh, spawns with a surprisingly low amount of ammunition in their guns, so that ammo crate right off the bat is a nice boost. And keep that ammo flowing as soon as it respawns, throw it towards a fight, throw it to someone who's calling out for ammo, and keep your team resupplied. But of course, being accurate with your Bushka Lancer is super key. Lobbing them around corners and bouncing them off walls is cool and does area effect damage, but the Bushka's true power is the fact that it, it is a one-shot body on Grenadiers, Canises, and Ragers in their unraged form and does a whole lot of damage to Maulers when it hits them in the body. So go for the body shots. And of course you, you can bounce it behind Mauler shields too. So the scout's probably best to bring him out like on the second E-hole just because his ability of the beacon grenade that debuffs the locust is most effective on the heavier units. And I wasn't a really good scout but I know that they, a good scout needs to, needs to take advantage point where he can cover both entrances uh, and always be shooting at people who are already fighting because if they're damaged, you can get that one-shot head pop on them, like, like you can with the Bulldog pistol. And the scout was also really key for taking out the Canises on the enemy pushes, because you can hit right at the at the end of the line, and Canises are pretty vulnerable to the Marksa while they're trying to heal the heavies or whatever is in front of them. That's one of the great ways to shut down a Locust push, is to take out the Canis so you can take out the rest of them. So just some general keys for playing with the COG. It is really important to learn the ticker tunnels, both for the locust side and the cog side, because tickers almost always try to go squirting through them right off the bat, and if you can be waiting at the end of the tunnel, it's an easy little pop, and they, they've wasted that time and effort that they spent flanking through there. So if you don't see a bunch of tickers out in the open, it's pretty much guaranteed some of them are trying to slip through those tunnels. And it's, it's really important to call out whenever the locust heavies start coming in and coordinate a quick attack on them to try to take them out as fast as possible because if a Locust Heavy is destroyed before he does a significant amount of damage to the barriers or the, or the COG lives, the Locust team has lost a lot of money on him. So it's really important to identify which class it is as quickly as possible and then attack it in a way that, that it's weakened. Like if, for instance, the enemy is pushing with some Maulers backed up by a Canis, the Soldier and the Scout need to really focus on trying to pop that, that Canis' head or hit him with a Bushka so that the Maulers are vulnerable to damage. And then you, you'd want to hit the, the Maulers up close with, with your engineer or, or medic to, to make them turn towards them. And the moment they turn and you get the side shot from the soldier, that's when you, when you pile those Bushkas in. Or if the Maulers are being really cautious and slow, you, you have time to lob the Bushkas underneath the shield and, and get, get the area effect damage that, that way too. So the unit which is most important to get the team fire jump on is the Corpser because it's by far the most valuable Locust unit. I think it's about 5,000 points. And if you don't get that almost surprise attack on it to where it doesn't know how much damage it's getting until it's too late, it can just burrow underground and escape. If you have a scout grenade hitting it as the attack begins to debuff it is, is another thing that's going to help a lot. And of course that will track it. If it does manage to burrow, you'll be able to see where it's trying to come up. And of course, if you, if you can deprive the Locust team of their, of their corpser before it's done too much damage, it's a great way to bleed away their points. So there's a lot of little strategies and little tips and little things I could keep ferreting out and, and going on about forever. But I think this really captured the basic COG team makeup and the basic strategies that they need to uh, use for each unit in order to get the win. So I, I really hope you guys are able to learn something. And I'll put that Locust video out a little bit later. And I will see you guys all in the demo drops.